All right, hello everyone. This is Dr. Lovely again, and I will be talking with you all today about engineering economics. So what is engineering economics? Okay, we have to think about how much a project is really worth to a company, and that deals with looking at the benefit and cost. Let me get my pen ready, there we go. You will take an ec economics course at some point in your college career, so this is truly just meant to be an overview of, of what is to come, once again, similar to um, probability and statistics. So we're just gonna cover some basics. So first of all, we wanna understand why economics is important for engineers, learn what the time value of money means, learn the components of a cash flow diagram, examine where costs come from in a project. We're gonna define different types of interest and use Excel to calculate payment amounts and effective interest rate. So why is engineering economics important? Why should you care? Well, economic factors always play an important role in engineering design decision making. So if you design a product that is too expensive to manufacture, then it cannot be sold at a price that consumers can afford and still be profitable to your company. Okay, you could think about, uh, is it possible for civil engineers to design a bridge that will never fail? Well, it is, but is it realistic? No, because it would cost way too much money and no one would pay for it. So a good understanding of engineering economics benefits you in managing both engineering projects and in your lifelong financial activities. So I remember back when I was an engineering student, it was kind of a joke that um, engineering faculty and, and engineers in general would always have a spreadsheet for any of their financial decisions. And it really is true. So we, we become very accustomed to creating spreadsheets for uh, financial applications uh, in our lives. So you guys will too. So cash flow diagrams is what we're gonna start with. So those are visual aids that show the flow of costs and revenues over a period of time. Um, I think as engineers, we, we like diagrams and in economics, this is no different. So they show when the cash flow occurs, the cash flow magnitudes, and whether the cash flow is out of your pocket or into your pocket. So here's an example. Uh, this one looks at buying a car. So the cost of the car is $15,500 with tax and fees, comes to 16,880. We put in a down payment of $1,000 and we take out a loan of $15,880. Our interest rate is 8% over five years and our monthly payment is 31591. So this is an example of our cash flow diagram. So we have a timeline that starts uh, at zero and then uh, the numbers here represent um, the months of uh, that we're making payments so from one between one month and 60 months okay because again we're looking at five years so 60 months um, this amount here five fifteen thousand eight hundred eighty dollars that's the loan from the bank so it's considered money in your pocket so it's going to be a positive value then the amount you pay the bank each month is going to be um, uh, shown here at the bottom with with arrows that point down and that's because those are payments that you're making Here's another one. So the cost of, a per of purchasing a machine is $50,000. Maintenance and operating costs is $1,000 per year. The income generated by the machine is $15,000 per year. And then the expected salvage value of the machine is $8,000 at the end of year five. So if we wanna draw the cash flow diagram for this investment, again, our initial cost is $50,000. That's what we're putting in, okay? So that's gonna be a negative. Um, the annual income, uh, $15,000 per year is shown uh, with the positive arrows. Okay, so each year we're getting $15,000. And then we have some maintenance costs uh, that are $1,000 per year. So those are gonna show up in the negative. All right, and then um, the salvage value is $8,000 at the end of year five. So if we wanna look at costs in a true economic analysis, because in, in a true economic analysis, we're gonna be looking at way more than what we're looking at in this project, which thus far has just been the bill of materials and then the non-recurring cost, which was your engineering time. So there are lots of costs associated with manufacturing or running a company. So those need to be factored in the large project economic analyses. So we can look at gs &A, which stands for General Selling and Administrative Expensive, Expenses, excuse me, and then O&M, which is the Operating and Maintenance uh, Amounts. So we've got non-deductible expenses, miscellaneous, so you can kind of read down the list um, at each one of these and see which ones are considered prime costs, which ones are factory costs, which ones are manufacturing, and then of course we have our total cost. So there's a lot that goes into uh, performing a true economic analysis. 
some basic concepts relating to money. Okay, when we talk about economics, we hear the term metrics. What metrics are is uh, sales, earnings before interest and tax, net income, earnings per share, margins, rates of return, and there are others. So if you hear the term metrics, uh, it, could, it, could, it refers to all of those things. Interest rates um, depend on the principal, which is the money that you borrow. Okay, and then what an interest rate is, it's the percentage of the principal charged by the lender for use of its money. Okay, we're going to talk more about interest rates here in a minute. And then, of course, we've, we've already looked at a bill of materials for our project, and that's where we keep track of all materials used uh, for a project. Simple versus compound interest. Okay, simple interest is the interest that is paid only on the initial uh, borrowed or deposited amount. This is the equation, uh, where F is the future amount, P is the principal or amount borrowed, I is the interest rate, and N is the number of years, assuming the interest is paid once a year. Compound interest means you get interest on your interest. Okay, so almost all interest is done this way. So with this uh, equation, we have F is the future amount, P is the principal borrowed, uh, and then we have I, the interest rate, M is uh, the number of times per year the interest is compounded, and N is the number of years once again. So let's look at an example, um, and this is available in a spreadsheet that I posted for you on the week 11 uh, material. So we have five years, and we've made an investment, an initial investment of $100. Um, we've got an interest rate of 5%, and then we're going to look at um, we're going to look at both compounding and simple interest. Okay, if we have compounding interest, it basically means that uh, in one year uh, our gain is five dollars. So five percent of a hundred is five dollars. So now our ending balance is then one hundred and five dollars. So the next year we start with one hundred and five dollars. We multiply that by five percent. That's five twenty-five. So at the end of year two we have one hundred and ten dollars and twenty-five cents. Okay, so again we are we are making interest off the interest, okay? So you can see that for the next year, for year three, we start with $110.25. The 5% of that is $5.51. We add those two, we end up with $115.76. At the end of the five years, we have $127.63. Now, if we look at simple interest, that is where the interest paid stays the same each year, okay? It doesn't matter what the interest is each year. It's, it's always going to be... Um, Sorry, it's not compounded like in the previous example. It's always going to be the same. So 5% of the initial investment is $5. So each year, we're going to be adding $5 to the total. So at the end of five years, we would have $125. Nominal and effective interest rates. So the nominal interest rate is the stated or the quoted interest rate. So in the previous example, that would have been 5%. The effective interest rate is the actual earned interest rate, okay? And this is the equation for the effective interest rate. All right, let's see. So the effect of the frequency of interest compounding periods has an effect on uh, the, the amount of money that you get. So if the compounding period is annual, okay, there would be one compounding period so for, um, for a 6% interest rate, um, you, the, or sorry, let me erase that. So if, if the interest is 6%, you would make $6 um, in that year. So your, your effective interest rate would simply be 6%. Now, if it were semi-annual, it would be twice a year. Um, you'd make $6.09. Uh, so then the effective interest rate is 6.09%. So you can see that the more uh, you are the more periods you're compounding your interest, then uh, the higher the effective interest rate gets. So if you or your company borrows a sum of money, it's usually paid back in a series of equivalent payments. Okay, where uh, This is the equation where A is the payment, um, P is the borrowed amount, I is the interest rate per payment period. It's uh, going to be the annual rate divided by 12 uh, for, for months, and N is the number of years. So this is the uh, function that you could use in Excel, and we're going to go through an example here in a few minutes. So Excel has many financial functions that can be used to solve engineering economic problems. Um, it is important that you pay close attention to the terminology used by Excel. So this is a table from your book uh, that gives, uh, again, this is chapter 20 from the Moavini textbook that we used in EGR 101. 
um, and then it gives the formulas, the equation numbers, the Excel financial functions, um, some examples from the book where they are used, and how you can use Excel to solve the example problem. So I encourage you to look at that if you're if you're interested.